Black revolutionaries, distillery owners, Italian fashion retailers, and Motown Grammy winners all share their best stories never before told in any other media outlets on Detroit Is Different. Visit DetroitIsDifferent.com or download the Detroit Is Different app on Apple's App Store or Google's Play Store. All right, we are back in full effect in the Detroit Is Different podcast studios. And today is something real special, as I'm sure a lot of people are getting more and more excited about the movie industry that exists in the city of Detroit, the independent movie industry, where a lot of people that I've met over the years in hip hop have transitioned right into films, a lot of independent films. Almost if you go on Amazon Prime video right now, you type in Detroit movies, you're going to do on a deep dive into like different narratives told about the city of Detroit, definitely some hood tales of street life and then it's even romance. But then it's also some very interesting stories being told that are creative. And one of the people behind a lot of these interesting creative stories and a risk taker, uh, someone that's an entrepreneur, someone that is very creative is the man I'm interviewing today. Mr. Darren Brown, how are you feeling today? What's going on with you, man? All is all is well, man. All is well. Living a dream. OK, living, living a dream, a dream is uh, <laughs> living a dream. that is uh, a heck of an expression yeah, when we yeah. think about uh, what a dream is like. Definitely, so definitely. let's kind of get a little bit into unpacking the usual Detroit is different story. Your people, man. Uh, how did you come about coming to Detroit? Your people. What what was it that led your family to come to Detroit? Uh, well, my family, my family, uh, for the most part, as far as the generations that I can remember, uh, my family has always been here. You know what I mean? My, OK. Uh, my grandmother currently resides down south, so of course everybody's family came from down from down south. Great migration. Whereabouts? Story. Uh, right now she's in uh, Tallahassee, the uh, Tallahassee, Tallahassee, Florida. Florida. Yep, yeah, yep, yep, man. Yep. So, um, but you know, uh, the origins of everybody is down south, Mississippi. You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay. Down in those areas, deep down south. So, um, uh, my mother, uh, we've always been in there. I grew up on Seven Mile. Uh, my whole life. Okay, so. now when people say they grew up on Seven Mile, it's, it's weird because it'll be a person like like a block away from Eight Mile and say they from Seven Mile. So let me say, and then it'd be a person like a block away from Six Mile and they'd be like, <laughs> "I'm Seven Mile down too." So Where was me, you at? I'm. I'm. Let me tell you, man. So I'm Seven Mile between Southfield and Greenfield. Ah, okay, <laughs> okay. Out of driving Seven Mile. Okay. Three blocks off Seven Mile. Okay, so like you so, really were so one seven, of the people I'm, that I'm was Seven, seven mile. mile. Right, exactly. You, you I wasn't ain't, like a, I went to my cousin that lived nah, off of Seven Mile. No, nah, <laughs> no. Nah, I grew up on Seven Mile, built more in Seven Mile. So, you wow. know what I'm saying? From the gas station on uh, Ferguson where all the stuff happened, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like hip hop shop, uh, all that. So, you know, that was my that was my stomping grounds. Yeah, hip hop shop was over that way. Yep. Uh, we think about the Ebony Showcase line. Definitely. Definitely, lounge. definitely, definitely, Ebony Showcase Lounge, man. Uh, it's still there. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? I, I believe it. Not that long ago, I mean, things still happen in there. Yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I was about yeah, to say, yeah. things still happen in there, man. Yeah. I mean, Greenfield, Intro Vest, man. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, so, I mean, yeah, I was all throughout there, man. When Before the Burger King was there on the corner of Greenfield, mm. before all that, man, the old buildings, I remember what it used to look like. Seven Mile, I remember when the, when the Pistons won the championship, man, and Seven Mile was just packed, man. Drag races on how to drive, all that stuff. So, you know. All right. So let's let's talk a little bit about that because that's what we talk about. We always start with like the foundation story. So mm-hmm. you said that was your neighborhood growing up. That like growing it, that's up. what you remember even as a kid. Even as a kid. So, I mean, originally uh, where I lived was on uh, Glen and Hamilton. So okay. That's over there, Calvert, Collinwood. So that's know. like this neighborhood. That's a little exactly bit. Like this, this neighborhood. This right. Central. You went from like a central neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. To a that would be Henry Ford neighborhood. That's story. right. That's right. Okay. But, you know, when I was over there, man, I I only lived there till I was probably about. Uh, I'm gonna say seven or eight. So you really didn't like, you know, but you, you were still kind of playing high. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you, man. You know what's you so know? crazy about that, man? I have mm-hmm. a lot of memories of things that I used to do, man. And uh, I remember when they were, um, I think they were fixing the lodge freeway, man. Mm-hmm. We would jump over, jump on the lodge, play on uh. the lodge. <laughs> like we would just do some crazy shit as kids, man. man. And, and I remember because back in the day, man, 
your mother let you out. The minute you woke up, man, your mother let you out the house, and you just had to be back before the streetlights came on. So you was out there. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, people wasn't, you know, things wasn't happening. Things was happening, but, you know, you allowed your kid to be a little bit more freer, and they just they just learned in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what it was. So Different time. and Way uh, different time. As we sit in this, my grandma's old house, uh, where the, America's first freeway, the Davidson, was built. It's pictures yeah. of my mom before she passed mm -hmm. where she was playing – as they were building the Davidson Freeway. Yeah, so it's yeah, interesting yeah. Like, that you talk about it because yeah. it's like they bring all this stuff in. Yep, you know, yep, and this yep. is definitely before my time because I'm rethinking to myself. I was probably around but just so young. Mm -hmm. I don't remember them really getting in the guts of the lodge anytime. Um, yeah, and I want to say, man, I mean, I don't want to – I don't want to uh, uh, – not say the right thing, man, but I want to say they was like doing the lodge at that point, or mm. you know what I'm saying. I don't mm -hmm. know how long the lodge been in existence, but yeah, I remember it was closed and it was repaving or possibly built. I mean, I don't know, yeah, you know, but what it mean? wasn't but, like your usual like potholes and patches. No, nah, man, it was a brand new and because it was so funny because when we hopped on the freeway, uh, the walls were so high that we had to run up the uh, off ramp to get back <laughs> up to the street. So you know <laughs> what I mean. But it was it was fun times, man. Like I said, it was simpler mm -hmm. times, man. It was. It was fun times. It was safer times, you know. So, yeah, man, I enjoyed doing that. But then I uh, made the transition to my mother. We moved on Biltmore. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I went over there at Newton Winship, then uh, graduated from Henry Ford High School in 97. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's talk a little bit about that that area, your, your mom. What mm -hmm. uh, what was your parents do? What what was their professions? What they do by so day? So my mother, my mother uh, man, my mother did a lot of stuff, man. My mother, uh, you know, sold clothes and then eventually got into the medical field as a, a, a coder biller. You okay, I mean? so she was a little bit of a hustler. Definitely, definitely and a she lot also of bit of a had, hustler. Oh, okay, a lot, <laughs> a lot okay. of bit of a, man, okay, my mother okay. made sure, mm -hmm. my mother made sure that I had all the finest things you know what hmm. i'm saying like we of course we lived in the same house everybody else lived in two bedroom uh -huh. you know what i'm saying if you was lucky a basement was good so that mm -hmm. was extra room you know um so you was but, a kid with a starter jacket basically yeah man my mother and it was so crazy because <laughs> my, mother, my mother worked at latents she worked at the clothing store all that stuff was covered man so she would make sure that i had everything but mm -hmm. i can't say i can say uh you know what i'm saying honestly like i mean i had a paper all day 11 Wow. So, you know what I'm saying? So I was working. She was working. When she would go and work, you know, I would take care of my little sister. Um, so, you know, it was, it was it was definitely a collective unit. And then my stepfather came into my life when I was 13, who uh, acted as my father up until now. You mm. know what I'm saying? So that's my man. So uh, what uh, what did what work did he do? He worked at Sibley's, man. Oh the yeah, shoe and store. I, yeah, I worked at Sibley's. I mean, you oh, know what I'm saying? Yeah, he worked. Store. He worked at Sibley's, wait, wait, man. Wait. We so. gotta we gotta break this down because a lot of people don't know about Sibley's. Yeah, yeah. I was actually just interviewing uh, someone else, Reverend uh, George Young the Third. Okay, where yeah, his yeah. dad was a manager at the Sibley's off uh, Woodward and uh, like yeah, West Woodward Grand. and Adams. Yep. Yeah, because I mean they had a huge shoe shell, uh, shoe, sh shoe sales there. So mm -hmm. uh, it was, and uh, that job, man. It taught me a lot as a kid because, man, I would go to school and I would keep my uh, I would put my suit because you had to wear a suit if you worked at Sibley's. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to make money, you had to sell the shoes. Mm -hmm. So I would put my suit uh, on a hanger yeah. uh, with my little put it in my little uh, suit protector or whatever uh, garment bag yeah. and uh, put it on my backpack. And uh, I'd be on a bus, man, holding the bus, holding the rails with my little suit on, you uh -huh. know, in the back and yeah. go to work, man. And uh, I would work from. When I got off work, maybe four, and I think at that time, Sibley's probably closed at nine o'clock, bro. Yeah, so, so you basically had one of them. I had a job like that at Taco Bell. It wasn't as prestigious as Sibley's. <laughs> right, 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 I mean, right. It's right. different when Say, you oh, got— Oh, man, it was, Sibley's was a different monster, yeah, man. It's, if it's you worked at Sibley's, got, it was like— <laughs> yeah, You know, yeah. sour cream and, and tomato on, your, on yes. your outfit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. happy to have a job, but it's right. like, ah, oh, this is killing me. Yep, yep. So, man, I did mm -hmm. that, man, and— uh you know, like, to be honest, man, we was all a working family, man. I had to get out there and hustle at a very young age, man. Mm. When I was, like I said, when I was 11, I was paper out. And after I was old enough to work at the grocery store, I used to work at Greenfield Plaza, which is now, I think, a CVS or something. Mm. Worked there. After I uh, uh, left there, I started working at Sibley's, stayed at Sibley's. Uh, I would do even up until most recently, man, no matter what kind of job I had, I would still put resumes out. Like, even if I didn't need a job. So you were still, <laughs> like, fishing just to have the opportunity available just if better, needed. Just better, man. Just yeah. better. Because, you know what I'm saying? Like, you work for people, man, and uh, people, you're a number. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. People don't appreciate you like they, 
it's always somebody who's above you job to act like they appreciate you. So the bigger corporation, so you just don't feel a certain way. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just do better. I'm going to get better all the time. So, mm-hmm. you know, like don't ever just like stop looking because it's always something that's better, Other that pays more, that yeah, opportunities, man. You just never stop looking for opportunities, man, especially in this <clears throat> day and age. You can't. So, so in, in this whole era, and Sibley's is unique, like being the shoe store was, because mm-hmm. I lived next door to somebody I was a manager at one point in time. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I remember, you know, getting rock ports. Yeah. And it's like, rock ports seemed to, I don't know what it was, like a relationship between rock ports and Sibley's shoes, because mm-hmm. it would be so many. And like, if people don't know, like, I, I think Reebok may have bought Rockport or something. Yeah, but and, for then, a while, and then nobody had on rock ports. <laughs> Like nobody yeah. rock Rockports, yeah. But well, for a while, like the Rockport Poor Walkers, like people, the way people like the Kohans now is like people was like, Rockport right. Poor Walkers was hundred and twenty five dollars, uh, <laughs> and then you had the Rockport Gore Texas that came, you know what I'm saying, the boots, and it was hundred and ninety five dollars, and we oh, talking man. about we talk about back in ninety five, six and seven, you know, two hundred dollars yeah. for a pair of boots, but cats. Going Ooh. to school, when people say, hey, you got to dress up or anything Ooh. halfway formal, you was pulling out the rock ports. Pro walkers. Yeah, you had the pro walkers. Those, man, and they was known for the Stacey Adams, and they was also, you know what I'm saying, known for the Hush Puppies, too. Mm-hmm. So, you yeah. know, man, it was like, and we had, I think we got like, I want to say 40 or 60% off of them or something like that. Oh, man. So and, you almost and they could. Used to, and they used to have sales that, you know what I'm saying, we would just put the shoes up until they went on sale, until they had, like, the sidewalks. <laughs> so the mugs be deep discounted. So we had, like, man, I had all the shoes, like, all the shoes. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. My, uh, the first pair of Shaqs, just because my mom wanted to support him, she caught me those. Yeah. And people, it's like Shaq's career, like I was explaining, has changed and transitioned so much. Yeah. But, like, when Shaq first came in the league, when I talked to young people, you got to almost imagine Shaq was – I'm like, everything y'all think Zion Williamson was, yeah. Shaq was that times like five. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shaq was, Shaq was, I mean, on the level of, I would say at one particular time, Shaq was on the level of Jordan as he far was. as notoriety. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm I mean, even like, to this day, like he's yeah. he's leveraged his celebrity more Amazingly. than I would have ever guessed it. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, mm-hmm. man, he's a good uh, uh, entrepreneur, man, and you know, he I think he and never and uh his personality didn't come out when when he was in the years and we didn't realize how funny he was nah. until later years, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. yeah, man, he's he's made a great name for himself. And like you said, man, those is those particular those particular shoes and stuff, man, they just it's just part of the culture, man. Yeah. Man, those jobs, those shoes. Yeah, I saw those y'all saw stories. so many Grand Hills. Oh yeah, man, Grand Hills. Yeah, man. We I mean they would get uh, they would get everything, man. And it was just like and you gotta uh, and you gotta realize that every Every person who worked there end up being like somebody prominent. You know what I'm saying? Later on in uh like I just know people who was managers that went on to be like, you know, politicians and this that it's like simply just gave everybody the opportunity to just be more than what it was, you know, what they a shoe salesman. So it was like, man, it's a lot of people out here, man, that you can always tell you, man, I used to work for Sibley's and you'd be like, yeah. Oh, yeah, you know what I mean? So it was a good. It was a good company to work for, man. All right, so let's let's talk a little bit about being so young, working in a company like that, because it's yeah. different than a lot of cats. You know, I worked at Burger King too. I've had right, a right. lot of jobs that as young people like, man, you know, really f this job, right, jobs. Right, but right, right. being a young person taking on a job where it's grown grown folks, yeah, in yeah. this position, and you have the same position. What was that like being young? in that space and then you also kind of got the pressure of your dad over your back too so it's not like you know you can't you know you you can't slack like the next guy so it was was funny because my father man he was he was basically he was basically the man there and i'm gonna tell you like our my um my uncle you know my father's uncle our uncle Mm -hmm. he was he was vice president let's say please Mm. (laughs) so so you know what i'm saying like when we when uh when we when i start working there man it was just one of those things where sibley's kind of like Gave you the opportunity to kind of like run your own business in a way. Hmm. Like you was responsible for everything. You know what I'm saying? Give an example. Uh, so like you were just responsible for inventory. You had to call. You had to replenish your own inventory. Hmm. You had to make sure everybody was there. Um, it just gave you a lot more liberties. Like because everything was manual. You wrote everything. Like if shoes was missing, 
they had their own they had their own truck system you know what i'm saying so you had to be responsible for a lot of things um unlike now man you know everything is uh automated uh, and, automated and you know automatic yeah. replenishment this that, and the other so if your store was going down it was completely your fault <laughs> you know what i'm saying like you couldn't blame anybody else so you know what i'm saying the inner workings like i said they Sibley's was just kind of like an island of business upon itself. You know, everybody knew everybody. If you needed help, you had to call people. You just needed your store to, your store to run properly. And they paid. They paid decently. If you was out there selling, they appreciated the people who worked for them and everything. So it was fun, man. It was fun. But you And know, being young, like, in positions like that is, it adds wrinkles to your character, I yeah, assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, definitely, like, definitely. you know. I remember the first job where it's like, damn, I'm working with, like, grown-ass people. But, like, for real. And not, like, the grown person. Like, you know, when you work fast food, most fast food places got, like, they got, like, a real stressed-out person that probably is, like, the manager. And you know why they're there. And and, they got somebody that may abuse the narcotic. Yeah, 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 yeah. They do all the cleanup stuff you don't want. And that was the difference because everybody who worked at Sibley's. You had to be dressed nice. Yeah. Like people, all, all of them look like managers. All of us was mm-hmm. in there walking around with suit and ties. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, doing doing it old school, looking like, yo, we're we're we unified. Which taught me, um, and it go back to what you say when you was like, yo, grown people, man. I remember when I was graduating high school, man. I had a teacher, and uh, he, you know, at the time, I think we were 17 or something. He probably was 27, maybe, which yeah. is a young teacher. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 28. Yeah. And I remember he told me, man, we was about to graduate, and he said, man. You're going to graduate and you're going to be competing with niggas like me. Hilarious. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he was a young black. Uh, he was cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he was yeah. like, yo, when you get out of here, you're going to be competing with niggas like me. And I thought to myself, damn, man, he got a car, a house, and everything, man. I ain't doing it. Oh. Then you graduate and then you realize, oh, man, you know, everybody everybody has life choices, man. So the 100% you think when you graduate you're going to have to compete with, you probably on there competing with 40 percent of people and you know what i'm saying you just Mm -hmm. you just really get a heavy dose of life when you get outside of that bubble of popularity and you know what i'm saying you're doing everything uh the same thing every day just just trying to advance just trying to get a beat just trying to pass a class i didn't get a beat just Mm -hmm. pass a class now when you ain't got no classes and you got all the free time in the world yeah what you gonna do with all that Mm -hmm. not now now nobody is giving you your goals anymore because when you're in school, the only goals that you're getting is just get out of here. But once you get out of here, who's giving you your goals? You go to college, don't nobody give you your goals. No. You have to figure out what you want mm-hmm. your goals to be. So the responsibility was kind of uh, instilled in me early. You know what I'm saying? And let's let's unpack that a little bit. As you said, your mom was always hustling. So she mm-hmm. had entrepreneurial spirit and and then the hustle spirit. Because I look at when, when, when I explain hustling, like some people think this selling dope. Yeah. And my definition of the difference between like uh, like hustling is like a lick, meaning that yeah. it's money that's going to come fast. Mm-hmm. You you have to be on the pulse of what the people want mm-hmm. and you got to know how to move it. Like yeah. so you have to have good the gift of gab. You have to yeah. also have a heck of a network and mm-hmm. you also have to um, be able to to maneuver in that right. space. Whereas businesses are playing when I think 5, 10, 20, 15 you know, like right. years down the line. Right, right, right. A hustle right, right. usually at most it's right is, in there. Yes. It's, it's like let's get so I'm gonna say I'm gonna say one thing. Like my mother my mother and we are like you said, um hustling is such a opinionated Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phrase. How you define you it. You know, yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. So I would say to be honest, like my mother my mother she hustled just to make the next day better than the last day. I got you. You know what the I'm saying? The extras on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, and if we mm. and if we so happen to hit a lick, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, to be honest, like, win the lottery. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. get a couple extra hundred dollars or something. Yep. It was it was it was for the house. Or know the person that hit the lottery, but yeah. their paperwork ain't straight, so they need your yeah. ID. But this yeah, happens yeah, if you got that type of network. Right, you know right, what I'm exactly. Saying? So you, you know, know what I'm saying? Like, I couldn't I couldn't imagine exactly what she went through because you yeah. know I was a kid. But I do know that her motivation was me and my sister. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And things got easier when my when my uh, when my uh, father came along. You know what I'm mm. saying? When my father came along. But like before, it was like, yo, she just trying to make it better than the next day. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? A couple bumps and bruises that I can remember as a kid, but like we still stay. She still made sure that you know what I'm saying. We was happy, and we she she got everything she gave. It was like never a, a no. 
Okay. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I think that right there, you it's it's two it's two ways that can go. You can be spoiled by it or you can be motivated by it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? By trying to give your kid the things that they want. So it's like when she gave me all the things that I wanted, it was like I can't go back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't not do certain and you know what I'm saying? And it's expectations behind certain things that you you just want to make sure that you stay there. Because if you don't stay there, then what did your mother work for? Yeah. If you don't do that, then you know what I'm saying? She got out here. You know, our whole thing is clothes. Like, me and my family, we just full of clothes. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's our thing. So it's like, man, I can't come out here and be misrepresented when my mother, you know, get, took me somewhere and she was like, oh, you graduating? What you want? Oh, I want a Versace shirt. Oh, mm -hmm. we want to get this Versace shirt. Ugh. You know what I'm saying? No okay. matter what was going on, we're going to get this shirt you okay. want. You know? So, so, so I, that just leads. I got I got uh, two other questions for you after uh, you finish yep. this co comment. Yep. Oh, here we go. Oh, no, go ahead. All right, so if you was Versace for graduation, what yeah. was you wearing for prom? What what type of gators did you have on for so, prom? So or it, the, 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 the funny thing, <laughs> the funny thing about that is, I was still a, a modest. So when you say the when I say the Versace shirt, of course mm. you envision the the collar and the Versace I, line. I think Tupac. And, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking no, Tupac. No, no, and, uh, You know what I'm saying? So the, my Versace shirt, you know. my Versace shirt was just a little cashmere blue. It wasn't even cashmere. I'm sorry, it wasn't cashmere, but it was just like it was a certain cotton. It was a certain knit, and it just had little Versace heads on it. And that was me. You know okay, what I'm saying? Like I, I didn't you. want to come out like oh, like everybody else, like mm -hmm. everybody else was. Yeah, you did not look like uh, Biggie in the hypnotized video. No, no, video. no. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. if you, even if I, even when I look back at my pictures, man, like I was wearing full suits to homecoming and mm. stuff like that. You know what so, I'm so saying? So you had gear because see, that's the thing. I think sometimes when we think about fashion wrinkles, and yeah. I didn't know this conversation was gonna get there, but oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like if you, if you hit the nail on the head, so much of that era. Like it stands out a whole lot more. Like I got, I got some pictures where I'm in an iceberg shirt, where it's like, yeah, oh, I had an iceberg shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know like, what's so funny about that? Because you, know, you had the iceberg shirt, and it probably had the Bugs Bunny, yeah, and the what you call on it. Yeah, and I had the iceberg shirt that was the iceberg shirt, and it just had the little iceberg on it. See, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had something where people be like, oh yeah, that, they yeah, could, yeah, they could yeah, damn near yeah, time yeah. date yeah. my. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like they can time date my Fubu. Like, oh yeah, that's see, that's Fat Albert Fubu. That was 2002. And one of the things about that was and it's funny that we talking about fashion i one of the things about that was when i did it i didn't want it to look trendy because i still want i mean yeah you know you spend 200 300 400 dollars on a versace shirt you, you want to wear this more than like that one time yeah or that one year shit yeah, well, both <laughs> you yeah, know because like you you wear uh you know you get the gaudy versace yeah. you wear that one time it, it's like like when um when I when I borrowed one of my dad's Kooji sweaters and wore it to homecoming. It's yeah. like damn, I can't never wear this ever you again. Can't because because you know what happens? Because if somebody the same person you wear it twice, they're gonna be like, damn, you always wear that sweater. It's like it's only my <laughs> second time. Like you just don't happen to be at the same. But you spot remember it. Yeah, yeah. You remember it because it's, it's the Kooji. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. Damn. Yeah. Damn, you know, I ain't always wear that goddamn yeah, sweater. It's, it's like, like damn, no, bro. I'm not. <laughs> it's just that <laughs> I had it on twice, man. <laughs> Whereas if you go, it, I, it took a while. Like, I had to get older. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm, you exhaust, mm -hmm. especially, like, hip-hop influences. You, yeah, you yeah. like, dog, yo, yo, yo yeah. let me get them lime green wallabies. Yeah, like, yeah, what? Like, right, right. face talking nah, about it. Nah, I see like, you in the wallabies and outfit twice. I'm like, like, damn, damn yeah. let that rest. <laughs> <laughs> Like you still listen to that Iron Man, yeah, ain't you? Yeah, damn, man. Like, all right, up. Ghost Space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whereas if I'd have went with the colors, bro. Yeah, if I'd have went with like a like a like a brown a earth tone, you would have never known. A black or a brown, you yeah, straight. Yeah, you would have never. That, and that was me. Like it was mm -hmm. like okay, man. Like you know, oh man, let me get something that's that stands out to the people who know. But don't necessarily stand out to the people who and don't. That's, you know what and, I'm and that's even another layer of fashion. Shout out to my homegirl Erin with uh, Orleans and Winder. It's a shop that she does real high okay, end yeah, fashion, like like where you go in there and you almost think like, damn, is this the same black shirt over and over again? But it's certain nuances of all those shirts, thing. and it's like, why is this woman's shirt? Three hundred dollars. I just, right. I, I right. just got love for Aaron. Yeah, so yeah. it's like I've cop stuff for like homegirls and stuff just yeah. because I got love for Aaron. Right. But it's the small nuances that that's it's like, thing. okay, yeah, that that is that's a five hundred dollar t shirt. Yeah, yeah, where yeah, like yeah. now nah, I I go places and I see and it's like, okay, I see. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I I've just more wearing. so been. I just more so you know? been 
heavy into the way uh, things lay on me, structured pieces. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? My wife, she uh, she likes a certain look and certain things that structure, whereas before it was just like, oh, I just need a whole bunch of different shirts. Now it's just kind of like, no, I just like this shirt. I just like the way things feel on me now. You know what I'm saying? You get mm-hmm. older and you just be like, yo, now, thing, now you fighting the, the functional and the practical and the fashion, whereas before it was just the fashion, you'd be like, damn, these, these shoes might hurt, but uh, now it's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, nah, man. This, this, yep. Oh, you got that sign? Okay, uh, you ain't got an extra yeah. large? All right, give me I the large you. then. Now a- it's like, as a, as a nah. Detroit, as a, <laughs> as a man that's 38, I think at like, I think maybe 32. Yeah. That was the last time I bought a pair of Air Force One. I'm like, this yeah. is an uncomfortable shoe. There you go. It creases and it breaks down. It is the flyest, like almost like every summer, I it, it was like, yeah. give me some more whites. Mm-hmm. Bam. Mm-hmm. Like, like, yep. like, uh, no, you know, it, it, it was like $100, yeah. $120, $150, yeah. $160, 100, yeah. I don't give a damn, $175. Yeah, yeah. And then it's just like, all right, how many times am I going to go through buying this shoe when I know? How many times you wear a white? Really, you can only Three wear times? them. If, yeah, yeah, three. And one, you walk it flat it off. It. <laughs> yeah, one, wipe it off. Now the thread's a little dirty in it. <laughs> you now you wear it again. And yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. Because like, I used to wear Chucks, man. I used to wear Chucks all the time. Then I realized, damn, Chuck ain't get and Chucks ain't get comfortable till they sold them to Nike. Yeah. So, like, I used to wear yeah, Chucks. Yeah, it's like you walking on concrete. It's not, man. It's like you walking on concrete with them, ch- them I original Chucks. I wearing Chucks, chucks yeah. a long time ago. That's why I can't believe how people wear Uggs. I mean, not Uggs, but, uh, um, What's the other joints? Um, Crocs. Yeah, the Crocs. Yeah, man, I can mm. never, I can never rock a pair of Crocs, man. Yeah. That shit crazy. Um, I mean, and, and this is what's so unique, even about the detail, because, like I said, you're in the film, but it just shows like fashion and colors. Like yeah. attention to detail is very important mm-hmm. with film, and that kind of leads me into that. Like even when you were a kid, were you always like, did you watch a movie and unpack it differently than the average person? Like, you know, I watch Coming to America and it's like, OK, this is funny. Yeah. Like, were you one of those people that was watching a film, like taking it deeper? Were you like at, at you know, Southfield City all day when you was a kid type person or like? Nope. I watch hmm. the film like regular people. Like everybody. I still so, do. So what was it that triggered? I want to do this. Uh, writing. Mm. So uh, and I tell this story all the time. And I had a friend. And he came up to me and he's like, oh, man, uh, I wrote a screenplay. It was in high school. Huh. Like, you wrote a screenplay. Yeah. So I was, I mean, to be honest, when I was in high school, I used to write because I wanted to go to school for journalism. Mm-hmm. So I used to always write, but never just thought to write a screenplay. You know what I mean? So I remember he came, he's like, man, I write a screenplay. So I'm like, you wrote a screenplay? So I just thought to myself, like, man, if this nigga can write a screenplay, mm-hmm. I know I can, because this yeah. nigga ain't the brightest. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah, yeah. that kind of what that kind of moved me. And then when I started writing it, I was like, yo, like, okay, cool. Um, so by design, you know, you have to go and you have to try to get it made so okay I, now let's stop just with mm, writing it alone mm, as a as a high schooler as a teenager right, right uh what what did you do because back then the, the internet wasn't what the internet is now like how did you learn did you go to the library or did you just like take a crack at looking at other scripts and, yep. and even doing so, something like that right back pre-internet being what it is Shit, it, it, it was wasn't, it difficult wasn't like google it wasn't like i mean yeah, yeah. i think i think back in the day the only reason people got computers was for like Black Panic, bro. <laughs> yeah, you know well, what I'm and saying? That like, was even, to be in chat rooms. And like, that was even, you said you graduated in 97. That mean, Black Planet was more it like. It was still startup. That was like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, yeah, uh, pull it up the I, script may take you like 40 minutes. Yeah, so when I got a computer, man, like my grandmother bought me a computer. She sent it to me. I'm like, yeah, this is this is the start of something. So uh, she sent me a computer, man, and it was just like. Yo, I'm just write I'm just writing a script on notes or something. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. not even knowing that it's programs that you can write a script on. But back mm-hmm. in the day, man, like to get programs, you weren't downloading programs off the internet. Nah. You was literally going somewhere, going buying store, it, buy it, hoping it, waiting for it, it to yeah. go in the mail, getting the disc out, loading it. You got the program. So for 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 maybe about a couple of years from what I can remember, I was just writing. I was just typing on a computer, you know what I'm saying? Mm. What I wanted it to say, what I wanted to do. And I probably looked up, you know what I'm saying? Because one of the things was formatting. Yeah. How to format it, how to format something. So, man, I'm like, I don't have a program how to format. So, I'm going to just look on how it look. And then I'm going to just space my way through it. Space, tab, tab, tab. Okay. Mm-hmm. Name in the middle. Dialogue right here. Yeah. Okay, that look about right. Okay, cool, cool, cool. It's a, it's a screenplay. Yeah. So, I wrote something, man. And, uh, you know, my first film was a... Uh, 
just writing about, you know, you, you figure you young, you know what I'm saying? You halfway decent looking, pretty cute girls like you, you know something about love. Mm. Roll love story. You know mm. what I mean? So mm. that that's kinda how it started, man. It was like I was gonna get it done by any means necessary because this is what kept my interest. And what age are you are you senior? Is it, what? How old are no, you? No, as a matter of fact, I'm out of high school at this point. Okay, I'm probably you out of high school. Yeah, I'm probably around 20 years, probably 19. 19, 19 so still really young. Still young, man. Still really young. young still 19, young. and with a dream of producing a film. And I don't even know who a point of reference is for you at that point in time in Detroit. Okay, so, okay. Um, so I, I didn't even know. I mean, I'm writing film and I'm watching film regularly. You know what I'm saying? I ain't looking forward to the art of it. I'm just looking over for the entertainment value. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because that's the most important part of the film, to be yeah. honest, the entertainment value of yeah. it. Like, you cannot watch a film and just throw away the entertainment value. You still mm -hmm. got to entertain. You know what I'm saying? No matter how deep you want to go into it, you still got to make something that people can understand and relate to. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, at the time, I think, uh, so this was the thing. I didn't idolize anybody on TV for doing mm -hmm. film. It was all the people that was tangible to me that I can go learn from, talk to, shake hands with. So uh, uh, at that particular point in time, it was nobody yeah, that's what that I, was I knew of that's when I, I did thinking. my first movie. So, um, but it was it was. People. So you actually shot your first movie? Yeah, shot What's my the first name? movie. What's the name? Uh, so the name was it was in love with lust. In love with lust. In love with lust, man. Okay, so. how how. Uh, how big of a, it's for most people that know, it's a heck of an undertaking in filmmaking, especially for young ones. Yeah. Uh, especially then, because, like, you know, it's almost hard to think that the internet wasn't what it is now, where right. you can, you know, like put mm -hmm. stuff up and, you know what I'm saying? You can go on Instagram Live, like, hey, we need some extras for this club. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. You know, for come sure. on out. Like, back then, you had to, like, really be like, hey, so make sure y'all show up at this time. Because I think at the time, man, it wasn't really like, Man, um, no, nah, it was it was kind of. I think that may have been when I did my first movie. It wasn't at twenty. I just wrote the script at twenty around. Okay, but I probably didn't start doing the movie till about twenty two, twenty three. Okay, but still, yeah, that's yeah, it was like still, the I mean, start of still wasn't, where things yeah, are going. Yeah, yeah, and like it was more active, but then you still had people on the fence. Like I don't know if I'm ever gonna trust somebody off the internet. Like, that, oh you know. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that, I remember at that particular point in time, if you met somebody on the internet, you was embarrassed to tell them that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> remember, like yeah. it was like you met you met him in a chat room. You a weirdo, you yeah, know what exactly. I'm saying? Like people right. still Yo, weird what about is, the what internet wrong with you? back in the day. Yeah, like how you do that? You don't even know how she look because yeah, i remember yeah. yep. used to be you used to be in the chat room you'd be like send a picture they'd be like i gotta upload it and yeah it was yeah. just nobody had a picture because they couldn't nah. upload it didn't know yeah. how to it was yeah. just weird at that time you had to go and scan the it dice, put yeah. it in yeah you had to basically go to kinko's and, you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah, like, yeah 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 exactly. it was like getting a passport id yeah definitely definitely like you that know? so um uh I knew I knew I wanted to make a movie. Um, didn't have the money to make a movie, and that's the other thing. So, like, even without without resources, how much of a cast did you have? So, so this is what I did, and um, uh, you know, filmmakers go back a long way. So, uh, I partnered up with Rocky Black. So mm. I don't know Rocky Black and Janelle. They do films here, mm -hmm. um, and I partnered up with Rocky Black. Janelle wasn't doing films at the time, but mm -hmm. Rocky was, and uh, gave him the script. And Rocky was like, "Yo, I want to play," and I was like, "Yo, you can be the main character too." Hilarious. You know what I'm saying? So it was invested interest in it. So this we, is almost like the Dolanite movie. Yeah, yeah, de bit. definitely, definitely. So, so then at that point, crew, because crew, cast mm -hmm. and crew are just as important. If mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. crew may be more important than cast. Mm -hmm. But how did you go about getting your crew? And the crew, for everybody that knows, that's the people. The So crew is a lot of people. When I first shot my first music video, yeah. so you need lighting, you need gaffers, yeah. you need sound techs, you need, obviously, a uh, videographer, like the right. video person yeah, that, right, right, that's right, on right. camera people. You need... Uh, uh, you know, you probably need like a, a, a production, like a, 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 a like a site manager that organizes, <laughs> making sure we're gonna be here and where food at, and prob all you that probably stuff. need all that, but all we had was camera. Hilarious, <laughs> hilarious, hilarious. At the time, you hilarious. probably did need all that, but at the time, we just had a camera. Hilarious. I don't even think we had a boom mic. We ain't had none of that stuff because it was like and the camera. Y'all had like the camcorder. So I'm gonna tell you what we had. No, we had we had a good camera now. So okay. we had we had a uh, we had a Panasonic uh, GL two, mm -hmm. uh, GL yeah GL two at the time, which mm -hmm. was a small compact camera. It was it was the best camera that was out for prosumers at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and then I believe, man, this is how'd so you get long the camera? Ago. You bought it? 
Yeah, Rocky did. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, hey. Or inside, or maybe I think track. I don't know if I had it, and then Rocky was like, "Yo," because we had one, and then I think Rocky got a bought a better one. Okay. And I think he brought that maybe second day of shooting. I wish I wish he was here so we could talk. But okay. Uh, and I think he bought that one second day of shooting. So we was like, "All right, cool. This is a better camera." So, so this we is thought, what we gonna you use. Know what so we gonna use this uh -huh. and um. Yeah, man, and then we just shot it through. Uh, you know, the crew was uh, uh, Dakia, Rocky, um, Janae. I think Janae helped out quite a few times because mm -hmm. she was uh, supporting her husband at the time. But now yeah. Janae is the one who's doing all the movies now. Yeah. So um, her and Rocky. And, um, uh, man, it was a couple of other people. And, I, you know, I tell this story, and I don't want to forget nobody, but it was so long ago. But um, all of us, man, I mean, everything that we did, we would just call and be like, yo, we want to come and shoot a movie. We was using our own houses, using mm. other people's houses, uh, you know, and it was a script that was just kind of like. Yeah. Guerrilla yeah. filmmaking. Yeah, we, we were just out here. and you So, know so you shot it. Mm -hmm. And now, and this is always a tough thing. How did you go about editing it? So, uh, man, how did we go about editing? I don't even remember who edited it. Because I was going to say, taking it from tape, that was a whole different type of error. So let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you. And I'm I'm going to probably just give him the credit. Or I don't know if it I'm going to probably just give him the credit because mm -hmm. that was the only editor that I knew back in the day. So how we met was uh, I had a friend. I went to Specs Howard. Mm. And my friend was like, yeah, man, you make movies. Because, you know, word got around that I made movies or whatever. Yeah. And he was like, you make movies. So he was like, I was like, yeah. So he was like, man, my boy is an editor. Mm. So we like, oh, he an editor. So we like, okay, yeah. man, like, what kind of what kind of editing is he doing? Or you know what I'm saying? Because at the time, but he's like, no, my boy is like an editor, and he edits for uh, he edits for uh, Channel Seven. Mm -hmm. So we was like, yo, whoa, that's cold. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you actually know what you're doing. You in the business. Yeah. So I met him, uh, Ken Baker, mm -hmm. Ken Baker, my man. So uh, I met him and. Uh, nicest guy bro he like yeah i do this and that and the other whatever the case may be mm. i don't think that i don't think that was in love with less though i'm thinking that's probably project 313 because i know for sure he edited project 313 which was uh -huh. my next film but um this one man i think that's how we met and that's how i obtained an editor mm. um because i know i know nothing, so, man. so like for nothing. people for people listening right now just so that you know as much as the internet has changed over the past we say 20 years mm -hmm. Editing software for audio and video has exponentially become way better and way easier for, I don't want to say do it yourself, but for a lot of... Prosumer. Yeah, Pro exactly. Yeah, you can you yeah. can do, because back then when we had tape machines, because I went to, you know, uh, you Northwestern in, in, in radio TV, you had to have the tape yeah. decks, you had to run it, you almost had to splice the tape. And I had to do that. And had piece to, it yeah. together. Yeah, tape it and together. And tape... <laughs> yeah. Oh, you had to tape a tape of the tape. Yeah, so definitely, definitely. It sounds crazy, especially like if you're like 20, you're like, what the hell is a tape? Yeah, yeah, But yeah. it is how <laughs> we used to watch Well, being say, I, I let my tape rock to my tape pop. People yes. don't even remember, remember tape pops, you know, tape oh, pop, man. man. Yeah, you was like, dang, like, it was, your, it was uh, your favorite and you would un, uh, like, un take the whole cassette yeah. apart, yeah. put it back together. Yeah. Like, yeah, man. Editing. Yeah. Like editing right now is man. I'm not saying it's 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 easy because it can still be nuanced, yeah. but the things you can do right now. Yeah, it's crazy. In Premiere Pro yeah. or Final it, Cut. Final Cut. Yeah. Like yeah. if you could if you would have showed this to people twenty five years ago, they'd they been like, get a, the hell they, out of they here. They think he was a wizard, a yeah, sorcerer. You you E. T. or something. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly, exactly. But yeah, man, that that was the thing. And back in the day, man, like, you know, um, the editing, editing was just editing was just a thing, and I was learning mm -hmm. because what happened was, um, and everything that I've done in the industry was because I was, I, my hand was forced to learn it. But I, I think that that's an interesting place to be in, and we kind of were talking about that too. Just mm -hmm. like having the willingness and courage to do it, because mm -hmm. it takes yeah. a lot of courage. Because a lot of us don't go there because we're afraid of failure. But Definitely. if we embrace the learning opportunity you learn that you, there's no such thing as failure because you're at all. always going to learn. Not at all. You everything that you do is going to be a win. So what what do you think gave you that courage to just have the 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 to have the you know confidence to do this because what you were embarking on was stuff that even to this day people 
twice your age now don't do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I think for the most part, it was the only thing that really kept my attention um, mm. because I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know anything else to do. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I used to draw and stuff like that, but it was like, man, nobody wants to sit down and draw. And at the end of the day, this was. I fell in love with it because I was able to just meet so many different types of people. Wow. Every, every day was different. Every day was good mm -hmm. or bad. You get to know people, you learn people, you experience experiences, you travel, you do all these things, man. And it was just like, yo, I get paid to meet people. You know what I'm saying? I get paid to work with people. I get paid to build relationships with people. So let's 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 put a let's put like as they say, like a pin in that right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Get paid. Mm -hmm. When does it transition where you're starting to make money from these projects? Hmm. Man, I ain't make money from the projects for a long time. Um, Hilarious, but, but it be like that though. It, it, man, it, 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 especially bro, in this game, we didn't even we didn't even know who to give it to, so we can make money. We just made a movie. Mm -hmm. We in Detroit. Okay, so let's stop there. You yeah. got a movie. Yeah. <laughs> let's say movie number two. You yeah. finished project three one three. Okay, there we go. What do you What do you do with this project? You got something. So uh, you know, I'm gonna tell you. Uh, uh, and Love With Us went on the back burner, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. it just wasn't edited, and you know what I'm saying? It was just like, yo, we don't really know heavy what to do with it. But It was ambitious, did. but now you're learning. Like we say, you you fell forward. That's one of the John Definitely. Maxwell concepts. Definitely. But like, it's like, oh, should have did this, should have did that. Didn't yep. da, da, yep, da, da, yep, da. Yep, yep, yep. Next time we know all of this. Yep. So then, so then Project 3 and 3 uh, comes along, and, um, and uh, we get kind of like, we finish it up uh, and get a get a deal with um um bungalow universal hmm. so uh bungalow bungalow universal says um okay cool which was a subsidiary of uh, universal records you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying on the video end and they were like yo cool okay we'll take it and we'll distribute it we're gonna distribute it we're like, okay so you hear that and i'm sure you like Popping champagne. Oh man, we like what? Like we getting? It's gonna be in Walmart, so it start turning up in Walmart. We can go buy it in Walmart. We can do all these things. So this is the caveat to that. Cool, y'all gave us Project Three One Three, and we're we're we signed it, and we're gonna go ahead. So let's let's stop at we signed it because mm -hmm. before then, especially like being young and independent. Mm -hmm. Paperwork usually ain't never all that tight. No. Uh, shout out my attorney, Stephanie Hammond. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what paperwork did you have leading up to that for everybody in cast and crew and all of that? So nothing. I mean, it, it was, was just handshake deal. Yeah, it was just the excitement of doing something at yeah, that point in time. Like we, ain't, we didn't even care at this point. We mm -hmm. just wanted to be like, we, we kind of went in knowing that, yeah, man, it ain't going to be a good deal, but we're going to be on Walmart. People okay. going to see us. And then mm -hmm. because the whole game at that particular point in time was making a name for us so we can make money. I got so you. So we can go and work with other people and people be like, oh, you You the people that did. Yeah, you did. Oh, Project yeah, come on. You know, we, mm -hmm. went to, we went to film. We had it in film festivals and everything. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We was down there. Um, so then when we, finally, when we finally got it, they say, okay, cool. We're going to go ahead and we're going to distribute it. So we're like, oh, yeah, bet. So back in the day. Ain't no computers like that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's no data like that. Mm. Like, it's not like now where you can look at stuff and you can see how many streams and stuff like that. People weren't tracking shit back in the day. It was just kind of like, I mean, you, music had their tracking system. Unless you, unless you independently pressed everything and distributed it like a... Uh, MC Hammer or Master P or E40 yeah. or something like that. Right, it was right, hard right. to. So yeah, we made our yeah we made our money off premieres, man, for walling it. So you know we made our money doing that. But mm -hmm. um, when it came to actually getting checks, and then when you then say yeah. uh, the premieres, who was the person that hit you off with that idea? Oh, we just knew that's what we was gonna do. We just knew okay. that. So you all we're gonna, gonna put it. We're gonna go to the uh, to the uh, movie theater and we're gonna say, hey, can we show our movie in your theater? And they were like, hmm. Yeah, we got you got a movie, and it was like, yeah, we got a movie. Can we show it in your theater? And they were like, yeah, you can show it in our theater. So just coming about and trying to get everything for them to be able to show it in the theater, mm -hmm. uh, you know, projectors and stuff like we went, we were showing our movie in theaters when they were like, yo, we got a projector and we don't even know because we haven't, you know what I'm saying? We mm -hmm. don't know. We got to get a different type of projector to play your movie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. Bring up you bring us the DVD player and we'll plug it into our projector. That's mm. how they weren't equipped for independent films back in the day because they yeah. just didn't have anybody bringing them one. Mm -hmm. So we will we will make money doing that. So when we got the, when we got the deal, we were celebrating. But what we didn't know about the deal was 
number one, there's no way to track it. Yeah. It's independent movies. How mm-hmm. many independent movies is out in 2000 and what? I don't know, five or something, whatever, whenever we did yeah. it. Not 2007, not many, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Not many enough for somebody to build a company and say, we're going to track independent films because all the films yeah. was coming from the big the big, big production big houses. houses yeah. And they owned everything. So they knew how mm-hmm. much they were selling. They were keeping their own records, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But they weren't keeping our records because nobody cared. So when they did that, it was like, okay, how many are we selling? What they did was they will press up 10,000 copies. Yeah. And if they got rid of 10,000 copies, they got rid of 10,000 copies. Because Walmart and big bigger uh, places would just buy the copies up. Yeah. They w- they couldn't return them back. So it mm-hmm. would just be like, you got, and then it was consignment too. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So whatever they sent out, they probably didn't get paid for it. Or they probably did get paid for it. We don't know. But who knows exactly. anything about that. So, so what happens is, how they would determine number one films is, Whoever asked for them and whoever we sent out, how many we shipped out, not how many we sold. So if it was like a movie and they'd be like, yo, we sold a million copies. You probably didn't sell a million copies. You just shipped out a million copies. It's so funny that you are breaking this down. It's uh, one of my favorite jobs that I tell people that I learned so much about the music industry. Mm -hmm. Was working at Harmony House and that yeah. right there. Mm-hmm. That's why if people pay attention, like, it, I mean, it happens kind of right now through the streaming services. Yeah, right, right. Like, uh, so artists would have ship platinum. Yeah. So it'd be so weird because yeah. I would like, so like I remember specifically one of those Britney Spears albums came out and they mm-hmm. said, yeah, that's going to be. And I'm looking at the notes and they're like, that's going to be the numbers. number one. That's going to be the number one album in the country. Right. And I'm like, for real? How the hell they know it's going to be the number one album in the country? It and it's two one. weeks. Out? And it's like, yes, because it was at every end cap. We mm-hmm. we we stocked so many of those Britney Spears albums. I want to say that Harmony House, we bought maybe 600 copies of it. Mm. And this is how it will work, actually. I'm going to take it a step further for mm. the people listening about the music industry. And this was with, as we call them, the physical the physical yeah. copy. Yep, yeah. We buy 600 of those Britney Spears albums. Mm-hmm. Uh, we probably only within three months would sell 120 of them. Mm-hmm. We would package up the other 480 and mm-hmm. ship it back to Universal or or, or BMG or whatever group yeah. she was with. Mm-hmm. And then we start really picking what we knew we wanted. So now it's like, okay, let's buy 10 Bob Marley albums, yeah. 10 Cat yeah. Stevens yeah. albums, 20 Redman albums. Right. Like, then we start really buying what we know right. the people at that store would want. Right, right, right. And right. it would be times, like I remember during the, the time I was working there, the Niles Barkley album came out. Mm-hmm. But we had a shipping order of only having in stock five of those Niles Barkley albums. Mm-hmm. That Niles Barkley album, uh, over like seven months, sold out every day because mm-hmm. people were calling right. and they it was requesting. Right. We could have sold a shitload more of them, right, right. but it didn't even matter because the machine yep. did not buy into yeah, Niles yeah, they Barkley didn't believe it. Yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know. Yeah. So and and that's to say, like I said, they would just ship them out, and uh, I don't know if they shipped them back. But what ended up happening is, so we would go and we would be like, "Yo, where the money at?" So yeah. this is the thing. Sure. Sure, what happens is we pressed up everything. Mm-hmm. So whatever money came in, that money went to us pressing it up. Mm-hmm. That money went to print and advertising. Yeah, that money went to us creating the DVDs and buying the jewel boxes and getting mm-hmm. the papers. So before, so before, the production in you covered. So that's how you all had to make your money. Yeah, that's how we had to make the money. But mm-hmm. when you already when you signed the deal and you signed the deal and you already fifteen thousand in the hole because they got to press up the DVDs. Yeah. You got to wait till you out of that 15000 And this is the what you just talked about is how a lot of other music artists, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. let, let me tell you guys this. I mean, it's kind of like a, a rock and a hard place. So like yeah. a Britney Spears, when we ship back those 480, even though they swapped it out and that's going to go in some universal warehouse, right. the artist is still charged. Yeah. For the, the press. full yeah. press, yeah. even yeah. if the artist did not agree to like, OK, why the hell are we sending this much there Definitely. when it's only going to be projected to probably sell 50? Definitely. Just print up 50 and send them to them. Definitely. It don't matter because yeah. the machine already press it up, is man. the machine. Yeah, they already press it up. So so what yep. ended up happening with that whole thing is we actually sued them and mm. they were like, cool, you can sue us, but we're going to give you no money. But you can have all these goddamn DVDs we got in stock <laughs> and they okay. shipped us all our DVDs. Okay. So they shipped us a, a shit, man. I want to say truckload of DVDs and yep. and DVDs and uh and um 
um, uh, uh, soundtracks. Mm -hmm. So at that particular point in time, all we did was really just sit on them. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. at that, I mean, at that particular point in time, when we got it and they gave it back to us, y'all didn't really like, have the 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 machine in house to work. Like what you said is like that's like guerrilla marketing of doing it like MC Hammer yeah. or, or, or E-40 yeah. and those yeah. relationships yeah. 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 with the record stores. Mm -hmm. And then Cosignment, for people that don't know what Cosignment is, Cosignment mm -hmm. is basically, I am a store owner. Mm -hmm. Darren has a product, whether it be like a, a T-shirt, mm -hmm. a CD or a DVD. Mm -hmm. And he says, all right, this is what I'm going to do. You, we'll cosign, mm -hmm. meaning I'm going to leave these 10 shirts here. Right. My shirt, as far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. I need back ten dollars off of all these shirts. I don't care how much you sell them, and I don't care how much you sell yeah, them yeah, for. Right, but right. give me back my ten dollars. Right. My suggested retail price is X, but yeah. whatever. Yeah. You know, and now you come, you call. Hey, did you sell any? Did yeah. you move any? Yeah. Did you did you not yeah. move any? Yeah. And then you know, when you smart, you got a cousin that like goes and and mm -hmm. tries to buy some too. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. But right, right. you need to have a a a. a you got to have a strategy to go about co signing. You, but, and this is, again, we don't know nothing about no strategy. We're in Detroit. Yeah. We don't know. We just know we just we just made a movie, man. We don't know yeah. anything about a strategy. We don't know nothing. And distribution. But, and, and So, yeah. The, yeah, but making that particular movie. So, in order for us to promote that particular movie, we made music videos with the people who was in it. You know mm. what I'm saying? Um, Big Hurt, uh, uh, Nia, um, and it was, a. Uh, I think those are the only two, really. Mm -hmm. So, I was never trying to get into doing music videos. Never. It was just wasn't something I wanted to do. That, that's how I met you. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just something I just wasn't going to do. So, uh, but what happened was everybody was like, yo, the music videos is crazy. Yeah. Like, what? What is happening yeah. here? So it was like, oh. So now I'm like, and then oh, it was this like is a, the opportunity. And then it was, and then around that time was like a, a big, I mean, for everybody watching, also, if you're young, you're like, what the hell, a music video? Okay, yeah. you all watch them on YouTube. Yeah. And yeah. really, they're more like, it's different. Like, it, it was really taking off, and then it was an underground, mm -hmm. independent mm -hmm. music video scene in Detroit mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. was taking off with, like, Seven Mile to Belle Isle. Yeah, uh, so you had, you had On the Move with Mr. Maul. Yeah, you had Pirelli, yeah. you had that, you had, uh, you had uh, Cheddar Boys. Detroit they, Rap TV. Yep, yeah, Detroit, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. You yeah. had, uh, and shout out to Al Nuke and all the stuff. He doing Nuke Definitely. TV. Yep, yep. Um, all of them was on Comcast Cable. Yep, yep, yep. Definitely, definitely and then, all the uh, slots. Yep. Exactly, so yep. you had all these different shows, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like That they, you can put your video on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it was, it was, it was, it was, it was an infrastructure that, People weren't just making videos, but now they can get, you know what I'm saying, hood famous. By, oh, it was. But yeah, it was, it was ridiculous. I mean, it count, was ri if, if it wasn't for the count that dope, count my dope money. Oh, song, yeah, I KD, yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. So at uh, 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 Street Lord, yeah, Street Lord yeah. Wine, I think they shot that. And they were like, yeah. yo, yeah, yeah. So it was a thing. So at that particular point in time, it was only a couple of us doing it. I think it was Boudin. It was me. It was Al Prophet. It was uh, on the higher end. It was um 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 ah. how I forget his name. How I forget his name. Uh uh uh. Ah, but he was doing more so like Eminem and uh videos. Oh, I know he did. Uh, I know who you're talking about. My mind is slipping me. He did the Rock City uh, Royce Five Nine yes. video too. Uh, G I'm oh. forgetting his name, but yeah, I know exactly who you're no, talking about. Cause I, I forget the, I'm, the I'm, Rock City video was yeah. as yeah. much as the song didn't really take off. That video shoot over the four days was like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. damn near like a Detroit rapper. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, like it. It was Anthony it was Garth. an experience. Anthony Garth, yeah. Yes, I don't know how I forgot it, but uh, yeah. And who else was it? Uh, who was doing it at that particular point in time when we were doing it? Nuke was, Nuke was shooting a couple videos here and there too. Yeah. Um. Uh. Man, I want to say. I want to say at the at that time that was probably everybody. You yeah, I saying? mean, it was, it was a, it was a close knit, like you know, because it it went big. Like yeah. you need a video because yeah, yeah. you had outlets for yeah, 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 yeah the yeah, videos. Yeah, 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 you know yeah. exactly, exactly. So you know, I was one of the main ones. Like if you didn't go to Anthony Garth, then you'll come to me. Yeah, I was gonna say that's how it yeah. was. Like Darren doing everybody. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah, like, man. Like, Darren, they got to talk to Darren, 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 Darren. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah. damn, how much money you need to do to shoot a video with Darren? Like, man, he my G, but you may be looking yeah. at about. <laughs> You may be looking at about five bands. Yeah, like, yeah, damn, that's what, five and, bands. And, and that's what it was, man. And the thing was, it was crazy because you know what I'm saying. Like all the music videos I did, man, wasn't that I knew of. 
it was hardly anybody who was like dissatisfied with what I did because I was making videos like like prom dresses, bro. And when mm -hmm. I say that, like everyone had its own specific look. It wasn't mm -hmm. I wasn't cookie cutting videos. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You told me, I wrote it down. We got it. You know what I'm now, saying? Now over this, this is like some old Mr. Miyagi because it also sharpens your film yeah, skills definitely, too. Definitely, definitely, definitely. You know, like when did you start noticing that? Like, damn, like I can try this here, try that there. Like, how did how did you start noticing that this is also strengthening your film skills and a decent revenue stream too? So, so it wasn't even shooting the videos when you go into film. It wasn't about shooting it because how many how many music video people do you know that actually makes a, a prominent transition in the film? Not many. Not, nah, nah, not, not many. Not many. Because the thing was film, I mean, like music videos is like you do it. You don't have to have any continuity. You don't really even have to communicate. The only person you really have to talk to is the artist. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I need this. I need this from you. This and that and the other. Mm. They ain't flubbing lines. They ain't got to know no lines. Mm. They know they song. You shit, they can come that half half out of their mind. Just as long as we can get you in in the shot and it shoot definitely you. Definitely was a lot of and, and rapping the camera. Yeah, it yeah. Was a, it was a lot straight. of a lot of green clouds. Def <laughs> definitely, definitely. But you know what? I'm gonna honestly say, man. Like when I was doing music videos, man, people didn't come like fucked up on my sets. Oh man, that's a, that's that's like great I didn't respect. have yeah, I didn't have that's that great respect. And 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 you know why? Because, like you said, the cost five thousand dollars video. You know, so, you know, it's so weird. Yeah. It's, it's like, yeah, the cost is like we ain't about to be in here uh, playing around. So they was they was we ready. They was ready on no point. Money. With, they yeah. was ready on point. Yeah. Like me, like, all right, Darren, what you need me to do? Yeah, if it was the like, hundred dollar video, they would have been. Oh, oh they, it's a party. <laughs> it's it's a hundred dollar party. But you they know had to show it up tomorrow. Like, Definitely. hey, can we shoot it tomorrow? <laughs> Definitely. It wasn't. No, it wasn't. No, you know, you got your late people, but it wasn't like, yeah, you know, yeah. people was like, people was actually like, yo, bro, don't do that. We got to finish this. You know, so it was. Mm -hmm. really it was really respectful throughout my whole career of doing music videos like i've never had mm. any too many run-ins or arguing you know what i'm saying it just yeah. wasn't that way because i didn't carry myself that way either to be sitting here arguing i just want you to get what you want you know what i'm saying because i was a fan of mm -hmm. the art so sharpening sharpening my skills into going into a um, film it's more so just like the repetition of what you'll need because at the time i had all types of shit man i had cranes i had so and it wasn't necessarily about sharpening skills. It was about how do I use this to make more relationships. Hmm. So what I did was, and why people hired me is because I was the one bringing out big lights. Yeah, I was the one that made it look like it's supposed to look when you're shooting a music video. I wasn't just bringing out a camera. I was hiring crews to come and set up lights and do this. And yeah, so people it looked good for the rapper as well when I was yeah. doing it. But it also allowed me to make relationships with production houses that rented the lights, the editing bays, the did that hmm. did all that, and they knew me because I want to say I was the only black kid coming out there to rent their equipment. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I was the only one who would go out. I mean, I would go out there and rent so often that people would go out there and they would be like, "Oh, what you want the Darren Darren Brown package?" Hilarious. Which was like Kino flows, uh, like a couple of Kino flows, a, a, a dolly that you can push, a doorway dolly, uh, and it was a, and it was like a two two Kino light kits. You know what I'm saying? Because that's really uh, all you needed when you were shooting a video. Because mm -hmm. we wasn't, you know, like the video is a lot more complicated now. Now they got the lights to smoke in. Yeah. We wasn't doing it. We were shooting street videos, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I was just glorifying, I mean, making it look glorious with the slow motion, with the, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because people was like, yo, what, what is this? Like, it's slow motion. It look cold. It's dope. So that's why, that's what really made me sharpen the skills. It was more so sharpening the skills of having relationships because people don't understand when you're in movies and you're a director, it's not about saying action and that's it. You have to maintain relationships across the board you got to make sure all the people that you work with is in a comfortable space for them to work on their craft because when people get uncomfortable sets get uncomfortable and they fall apart mm -hmm. so my thing was going into it and learning how to work with the difficult person yeah learning how to how to uh identify that it's not that they're difficult it's that, that they're either afraid or uncomfortable or they don't know if they're That's doing deep. well. That's deep. And, yeah. and 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 you're right. I mean, being a director, it, it's a unique position. Mm -hmm. I, I've never 
set in that. I've witnessed it through my sister and mm-hmm. others. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I remember when my sister shot a movie, I was like, damn, you got all these people working for free? Because that's mm-hmm. the other angle, too. It's mm-hmm. going to be an independent filmmaking. It's definitely a budget, it's, but money is scarce. Yeah, yeah. So, like, who's paid and who's not paid and keeping that energy high, making sure that the food is on tight. Uh, on, on tap and, mm-hmm. and on deck and that mm-hmm. don't you know what I'm saying like the fifth extra down don't eat 45 chicken wings right, and right. everybody exactly. else can't exactly. you know because exactly. the main actor may you know you may reshoot something 25 30 times and exactly. that main actor yeah. ain't eight in yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you, you in there saying one more let's do let's do one more let's, let's try this one more time and one more issue. one more time yeah 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 time management is the biggest issue with mm-hmm. uh, what we do so you know what I'm saying just making sure that uh, and like I said, working with rappers uh, back in the day, um, you know, you, you get first of all, when you're a director, you get different personality from them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because we all know that, you know, uh, you got to do you got to be big when you do certain things. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And rappers had to be big. But like I said, when you talk to people and you realize, oh, OK, like all of them, I want I want girls there. And it's yeah. like we bring girls. And the rapper is shy around the girls. And it's like, no, but you rapping about bitches and, and doing this to them and stuff. And it's like, the girls would literally have to be like, you can touch me. It's okay. And Hilarious. I'm like, yo, yeah, you got to if you Hilarious. wanted to look. Y'all look, you look awkward, bro. Like, get it, you get look it going. Awkward. Yeah, so. <laughs> okay, <laughs> also, this is a classic misnomer that most people, rappers, like I tell people often as a rapper myself, we're, it, rappers are nerds. Because they're playing with words all the time and they're not and very, and very like some of the rappers I mean, are some of the rappers. They act tough and they act like they these big time players. But in reality, a lot of rappers are just nerd dudes. They just because playing with the words and you definitely got to be intelligent. That's you what script I'm saying. This stuff out. That's what I'm saying. It's not the character they're portraying yeah. in the song. So so with that being said. What happens along the way, I don't want to make it a rapper talk, but what ends up happening is they become a prisoner of their own ego after a while. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the character that they betray, they start believing in that character more than they believe in themselves in a lot of cases. So then you have an issue. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I realized that and I got out of it quickly. Yeah. I couldn't do no more. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because I don't want to be sitting here arguing if I'm asking you to do and you telling me, do you know who the fuck I am? Yeah, and it's like, hey man. Nah, yeah, and it was man. just like, I don't want, I don't want to do, I don't want to do it no more. I'm it getting older. Yeah. And then after a while, man, it just was like, I'm not going to be uh, going in the direction that you want to go. Yeah, yeah. First of all, I you have to you have to give up something in order to get something else. You know, you can't opportunity hold cost definitely. Mm-hmm. And and then number two, they start getting younger, start yeah. being kids, start. You know what I'm saying? We want to do more of this. We want to do more of that. And it was just kind of like. Okay, man, like... And you're not as connected, want. whereas, like, we we in that, you know, Big Herc is still a big homie of us, but yeah. he's still in the ilk of, you know, where we come from. KD's right. in the ilk of where we come from. Right. Stretch in the right. ilk of where we come right. from. Right. Whereas a cat, like... Uh, you know, forty two Doug. Yeah, I'm saying like it's definitely because we we all from the same crib. Definitely, it's definitely. it's it's stuff we relate to, but yeah. culturally it's just different. I, yeah, you know what I'm, I'm saying? I can't I can't give forty two Doug what he wants because I don't know. What culturally, you're not yeah, on the pulse. Yeah, it'd be like shooting. It'd be like shooting a video for for uh you know for for David Ruffin yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. I, I don't. I was, yeah, yeah. Culturally, was, I'm disconnected from what you do. I was recently on a shoot that I had to do a commercial for. Um. And uh, all the rappers was there. Uh-huh. And uh, I had to shoot them uh, singly doing a commercial for a radio station. Yep. So um, now for me, man, my son 21 years old. So I'm literally w- walking around here like, all right, young man, I need you to do this, this, that, and the other. And I'm kicking yeah. it with you and this, that, and the other. Because I don't know none of y'all. Yeah. So everybody else is like, oh, that's such and such. And I'm just like, all right, what's your name, man? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. But what's so funny about it is I'm asking what their name is. And some of them is giving me their government name. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, and because people always try to get down on the younger generation. It's like the younger generation is as respectful as, uh, I mean, shit, we was more disrespectful <laughs> than the generation now because they understand how the Internet works. They understand how to be smart and then uh, be this rapper at the same time. Yeah. So, you know, we see this, but when you actually have a one-on-one with them, you realize, like, yo, they're they're emotional beings. They they're doing it for a particular reason. They, and sometimes it, they just get caught up in it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah, man. That that 
like I said, when I stopped doing music videos and, you know, I still do some every once in a while if somebody back in the day call and be like, yo, D, I'm only coming. I need you. you. Yeah. Then I'll do it. But for the most part, man, it's, that's it's, not it's where, where where a lot of your time is. So hmm. what what bounced you back in? Let's talk about that. And then you got a big project coming up yeah. now. Yeah. Hence, you was like, hey, let's do this interview now. And hmm. we're going to time this around the time. Hmm. I'm excited about this project. Yeah. But what bounced you back in? What was that project uh, that bounced you back in the game? And how did you come in with, with like a new understanding from, from the time? And I know you were still working, but what was it that said, all right, I'm, I'm going back into filmmaking exclusively? Um, Man. So it, it, was ne- it, was, it was never a time where I was like, like... where it switched back like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was never a time where I was just like, yo, I'm just do movies. I mean, mm-hmm. it was a time more recently. Um, but it was never a, cause I always, you know, like I will work. I wouldn't have to work for two years cause shit was good. Yeah. And I had to work for three years cause yeah. shit ain't slow down here. a little bit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I was all, but I was always an optician. So I always made decent money. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And I was always able to just find a job and be back and forth. So, um, hold on one second. Ooh, do, 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 do. So with that being, with that being said, um, um, I, w- I would do I would do that and coming back to it was well let me let me start let me start over I'm sorry so um coming back to it was like always easy in spurts because your passion is deep in there. yeah exactly but I would I would I would wear myself out because people mm. will wear me out and, and when you talk that's I guess the other part of being in a position like a director because you're feeding off with so many personalities because mm-hmm. as much as you're keeping the cast in the same zone keeping the crew in mm-hmm. the same zone mm-hmm. may be just as difficult mm-hmm. cause the crew can get in you know they can get emotional too or or uh, and, you and know, in it. another zone, and you know, people. I've seen, I've been on sets mm-hmm. of music videos and, mm-hmm. and real film where I've seen a light guy leave or mm-hmm. an audio tech leave, mm-hmm. and then the director just tries to play it like, "Look, we still gonna be good." You know what I'm saying? You know, he wasn't right, so you know, let's keep this energy. And something like mm-hmm. that could be a, a you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely. So, and that's the thing. Like, what happens is people don't realize. Like, sometimes you get you. Sometimes you just get you just get tired. Mm-hmm. You know, different personalities and all these other things. And then I had other things. I was I had other things that was going on too because you know I would do like a uh, charity event for the refinement group and stuff like that. Yeah. So I always had something going on that didn't yeah. ha- that afforded me uh, that afforded me uh, that afforded me the luxury of saying no to people. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And that's a heck of a that's a heck of a luxury. Yeah. Um, being an entrepreneur mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to 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 be able to turn something down. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I was I was blessed in that way because I didn't have to take money from somebody that I know was going to give me an issue. And then let me say this, too, to people. Also, when you start turning people down, it's so weird. They kind of <laughs> pursue you more. It's kind of like the 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 girl that dish you. It's like, damn, now she yeah. <laughs> now she yeah. a little finer. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it, it 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 sets the stage a little bit more if you do engage because yeah. now it's like, nah, let me refer it's you a, to this a, person. And then they be like, sword, I don't want that person. Yeah, I yeah. want you. Yeah, no, you know yeah. What I'm saying? And, and more, and that happens a lot. But it's a double edged sword because you can say no to somebody, and they be like, what? Yeah, you know who I am. <laughs> and it's like, yo. So you know what I'm saying? So for me. Being being in movies is a comfortable bubble because yeah. you know what I'm saying. But even even then, man, like even then, uh, certain situations can uh, rear his ugly head, and you can uh, you know what I'm saying. Things can happen, no. and you know that's just that's just because you can't you can't gauge like. I had to post something the other day. Like people say, "Oh, Darren don't like me," and it's like, but I don't know you, so yeah. you know what I'm saying. And when you see me. You know, the energy, as long as it's about film, the energy is always going to be And you good. And you definitely have enough of a, of a presence in what I call, in, in, in everything with Detroit filmmaking, mm-hmm. where your presence looms where people know of you. Yeah. And, and definitely people speak of you that you have no idea who this person is. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, sometimes man. when people say stuff about me, and it's like, dude, I don't know you. Yeah, you yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, but I'm, I'm, also, <laughs> I'm also one of those guys, like, I'd be embarrassed if I don't know you. Like when people uh, be like, "What's up?" and I'd be like, 
hey, they just be like, hey, Darren, you know this. That. And That's the like, difference between me and you. I'll have a whole conversation like, what up, dude? And yeah. then I'll throw out some filler questions to be like, how your people and them doing? Yeah, Y'all still yeah, out yeah, west? Yeah, yeah. And it's but, like, I see, nah, But that, that's know. that's my whole situation. Like, I love, I love communicating. I hate talking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know that's I mean? why you a writer <laughs> yeah yeah man I love communicating I hate talking like, that's why you a writer <laughs> yeah I can't talking is exhausting to me you know yeah. what I'm saying but when we when we when we're discussing something of substance something like yeah. film like I can literally talk to somebody for an hour about film yeah and literally five minutes about nothing you know yeah. what I'm saying like cause that's yeah. all I want it's, it's so um yeah man the, go, going into it uh I was going back and forth because, like I said, I would get tired. I would, yeah. you know, people would be like, oh, and then I Man. would do a movie. And for a long time, I just stopped doing I just stopped doing it. Number one, I had to get my family in order. And that's what I was going to say because, yeah. I mean, when you, when you dive deep into these creative entrepreneurial projects, mm -hmm. like even with what Detroit is different, and people still come up to me like, what is Detroit different? Detroit yeah. is different. And it's like... I'm still d defining what this is, but mm. it takes mm. a heck of a team of like support of family mm. and friends to know that like you may grind, mm -hmm. um, you know, especially like with these bigger projects, you right. may spend, you know, and people, you know, it's a classic American phrase. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. Mm. And it's like, nah, but are you really busy? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like the little bits and pieces that sometimes you look up, you know, especially like filming. <laughs> like when my cousin Lumumba, when he says, yeah, this is probably going to be an 18 hour day. You'd be thinking, man, this ain't going to be no 18 hour day. It's like, no. It might be a this, 20 hour day just because he said 18. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. So, because so, yeah. when you're in that editing floor. Nothing's worse mm -hmm. than when you got that idea like, damn, I wish I'd have got that one shot yep. that I knew would have been yep. perfect because yep. 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 you can't get the light person, the, the class, the crew yeah. just for yeah. one yeah. extra shot. You can't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and, and that's and that's other thing, man. And, and thank thank God that my wife is very supportive in a way. Congratulations. That, uh, yeah. When I say when I say I'm going for two weeks or she say, oh, it's movie time. She know that she won't see me, and I still come home, go to sleep. But she knows she won't see me because I'll be in, at in some cases two, uh, and be back on set like seven or eight. Yeah, or, you know what I'm saying. Because you, as a director, you have, and then as an independent director, you're more than a director. You're yeah. like a, a director slash executive producer. And I know I I am very much because so that. you're so, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're you're you're. A lot of it's your cash. Mm -hmm. And even if it's not your cash, even mm -hmm. if it's investors cash, mm -hmm. you're the person that That's people possible. are looking for. Yeah. As yeah. It, it, you know, when somebody, you know, if, if Detroit is different, funds the next Darren Brown project, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to hear anything about, well, you know, my man ain't come to set on time. I'm Never like, Darren, that. I don't know who the hell my man is. Never that. I know you. Definitely. <laughs> definitely man. But you know what? And my investors, my investors, man, you know? I've been blessed to have my family. That's good, my man. Investors. I mean, and even and when I say family, literally my brother, you That's know what good. I'm saying? But literally when I say family, like my friends that That's been good. like and believe in the thing the that vision. we do. It's like, been seeing you since Yeah, since yeah, exactly. Four. Exactly. Yeah. So but for the most part, like, it's fair because I allow them to go ahead and because we're just we're just at a part in our and I'm at a part in my career, I'm at a part in my life where it's like now I'm allowing people to give me money, mm -hmm. um, but not too much. I got you. Um, because before, I didn't know how I was going to get people money back. Like, for sure, for sure. And let me say this, too. Um, for, for all the creative people watching, I, I had this talk with a lot of people. Because I've had investors give to Detroit is different and different projects that I'm doing. And let me say this. Because I'd love to give to something that you're doing. Like, mm -hmm. sometimes we like giving because your passion and you going through with it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is almost like maybe where I stopped short at something creative that I didn't mm -hmm. do. Right, right. It just, it come into fruition. Right, right. Like sometimes I think we get lost in the, in the, in the crowdfund, you know, you yeah. get the, the ticket here and that. like, man, I don't care about all of that, right, man. Right, right. I just want to see it made, man. Yeah, yeah, here go. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like I, I've, I've given to, to this, that, and the other, but this is something that's real independent and it's feeding the mm -hmm. ecosystem mm -hmm. of other mm -hmm. Detroit mm -hmm. artists and mm -hmm. other Detroit, uh, crew, mm -hmm. uh, like actors and crew and yeah. gaffers and, yeah. and you give an experience to people like that's money to me, as far as I'm concerned, that right. helps the whole artist community of Detroit. Yeah. But what I will say is even even in my journey, man, like I still I still try to do something that gives back uh -huh. um, 
to the filmmaking community, and that's the Detroit Filmmaker Awards. Mm -hmm. So I do that, and that's my nod to to everybody to say, yo, y'all doing a great job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we do that. And then plus, man, it's always good to be recognized, man, for your great work. So yeah. I wish those are the things that I'm implementing to to keep motivating everybody to keep doing what they're doing, man. You know what I'm saying? That's my that's my thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um yeah, man, it's been it's been just a, a great journey for me. I'm very comfortable in where I landed, you know what I'm saying, where I will continue to grow. Um, you know, everybody is it's all love for everybody, man. I don't have but then again, you know, I don't really people respect the things that I say, you know, um, mm -hmm. it's the internet. So, you know, sometimes I can get on there and I can Facebook too, you know yeah. what I mean? But for the most part, man, it's just been a, a great experience, a great journey. And any time that you can honestly like, you know, take care of your family and your time is yours, like man, you, you've, you've done, you've done good. You know Yeah, I mean? man. Autonomy is power. Yeah. Which, yeah. which brings us to, before we get to the close, I got yeah. classic Detroit is different questions, but what's the new project? Oh, so the new project is Dimes, man, which is a, uh, a wonderful, wonderful, great film, man. And we we cut the trailer, and the trailer is it. It looks like a. It looks like actually a caper. You know, three young ladies Hilarious. Who's setting people up to uh to rob them. Hilarious. But one of the things is they they terrible at it. Number one, they're not, they're not good at it. And number two, they just all going through problems of their own uh -huh. within the movie. So you know, it looks like a drama. Shoot them up, bang bang. But to be at to be honest, man, it's really a heartfelt movie about these three women that just can't can't get it right on on no end. So it's not set it off. It's like no, it's not set. It, it was it, like it was like try to set it off, but end up. Yeah, it's not on the, it, set. <laughs> the best way. The best way that I can that I can uh, describe it is um oh man what was the one movie man where they was out robbing banks uh they was he, out robbing banks uh uh, -uh no 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 that's that serious it was comedy. Where the the um, husband and the wife was out robbing. Oh oh, were, uh, yeah. fun with Dick and Jane. I with, think yeah yeah uh, yeah, yeah with Jim so, Carrey yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's her name Taylor Leone. And, and and this is this is their thing. I mean they're in robberies, arguing with each other, yeah, trying to hilarious. keep it together, robbing people they know just to get the practice going. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So it's it's a lot of fun with this, and I was just so excited, man, working with uh Sierra Nix and Hoops, man, like their chemistry. Mm -hmm fucking phenomenal that's dope. like you don't like when you see it you be like yo they've been hanging out with each other like, and, and and also i guess uh did you wrote this as well so uh uh don don bolton wrote it you know what i'm saying okay. just a sister with helping out and sharita sharita cheatham so how did you like, how did you go about finding um you know like knowing that this was the script and i'm sure it's very exciting for them so so how I knew, so it's a story behind how I knew this was a script. So Don Bolton has been my editor for years on top of years. Okay. Good best friend to me. Anytime I needed anything from this guy, mm -hmm. he dropped what he's doing and he do it. That's what's up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Oh, man, I need you to do this. Don't worry about it, D. I'll take care of you. Oh, I need you to do it. Don't worry about it, D. I'll take care of you. So all the long time where I'm doing films and he's editing them, I'm like, Don, when are you going to do yours? I'm going to do it, man. I'm going to do it. We we got to make sure, you know, we get this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. I said, nah, the next movie I make is going to be your movie. Hilarious. That's dope, though. So so he was like, I said, start writing it. Mm -hmm. He was writing it. He said, man, I got some stuff on paper. I said, cool. He said, okay, uh, I'm going to send it to Sarita so she can tighten it up so it'll get to mm -hmm. you. You know what I'm saying? Sarita tightened it up. They sent it to me. I tightened up a little bit more. Um, Add a few elements and... uh. You know, it was just like, yo, man, like, you you work with a guy, man, and you see he's he's there for your dream. He helping you out mm -hmm. with your shit. You have to give something back. That's what's up. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and his whole thing was he was shy with it. I don't know. I don't know about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know possibly if I can do it or pull it through or whatever the mm -hmm. hangup was that he didn't do it because he has the talent, the know-how has a network to do it just didn't it's coaching him through it's coaching him through his own yeah apprehension and fear about it so I said, but just getting him out there to play ball so i said bro i'm gonna pull you through this kicking and screaming if this is what mm -hmm. we're gonna do but you're gonna get your movie done yeah you're gonna you're gonna be in here you're gonna we're gonna make money together we're gonna do all this together mm -hmm. so that's when he said all right cool he sent me the script i got to work yeah. Got the producers, got some investors, mm -hmm. and we start doing it. Now he has his film. 
that's power. Um, how, uh, as far as like with casting and all of that stuff, uh, yeah. how do you go about casting now? How do you know who's the right person for for the film? Um, you it's know, a, do you look for name? That, do you are you always looking for like okay, we need to have some type of because that's the Hollywood angle. Yeah. Like we need somebody that's a hook that people yeah. gonna say ah. That, so that it's so funny. We got two hooks in this, and one of them we don't even promote, which is uh, Glenn Plummer. He's mm-hmm. in this movie. Okay. Um, OG Bob Johnson and uh-huh. Hoops, but the movie was bigger. The movie was actually bigger than just the names. Yeah. I just love working with Glenn Plummer because he's always there. He's always yeah. like, yo, D, what's up? You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. that was just kind of like a, yo. I mean, he's become such a friend to me. It's like, man, you know, come on and do this. And he's like, put me on a plane, man. I'm there. So, you know, that. Um, and I'm a fan of Detroit actors and actresses. Like, yeah. I already know who I'm going to work for. I mean, who I'm going to work with yeah. when uh, I'm writing. I already know wow. who I want. Like. You know what I'm saying? It's never a, I wrote something and I'd be like, he'll be good. Hope we can get him. We'll be good. We hope we can get him. It's always somebody in mind mm-hmm. when I'm getting stuff together. And then what happens is, I mean, of course, in true Hollywood fashion, we do try to get who we want for those roles. Yeah. If those roles don't always fall through. Then it's like, okay, now we start shifting. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But we can't. I mean, I can't afford it. So it's usually about two people who I might be like, okay, I do want to work with them. Let's put that feeler out. This is an mm-hmm. opportunity for me to call, talk, sit down, have lunch, and try to talk to them and see if they want to be a part of it. Uh, with Dimes, I had I had quite a few people who wanted to be a part of it, but it wasn't a SAG film, and I didn't want to make it a SAG film. I just mm-hmm. wanted to really do it, get it done, and work with everybody. So now, now, so can you explain the difference between a SAG film and non? So a SAG film, a SAG film is usually like a uni- unionized film mm-hmm. that you you really got to have your paperwork together. Like they get payroll. Uh, insurance, all that stuff. This is what they pay for, and they all have to be on your set. And you're really helped by what they say to be the rules. Like you can't work your you can't work your your actors past ten hours. You know, time and a half if it is. They have SAG minimum wages, so you know, might be seven hundred dollars a day or whatever. It gets pretty expensive. But with that being said, depending on who you are, somebody might be like, yo, I want to work with you. You know what I'm saying? Regardless yeah. if it's SAG or not, we want to do that. So it's just, it's, SAG is just, uh, you know, organization that kind of organizes the uh, the actors. Yeah, and, screen you know actors. Like protects the actors yeah. from being abused by the production. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, so uh, yeah, man, but the people who, who came on board, which is Nick Sierra, and, I, and, I've, and I've reached out and I called and I said, hey, you know, this, that, and the other. But Sierra has been in two two of my films and she's uh, amazing to work with. That's cool. Uh, Nick's turned this out. Hoops is definitely uh, uh, great to work with, man. Like, cool. very humble, very want to get the film done. Like, her passion to getting better and wanting to do more. It's just like one of those things like, wow. So then we have Demaris Harvey, who's been in a ton of films. Um, we have uh, uh, Wesley King. We have Mike Bonner. We have uh, Will Bennett, who's always in one of my films. Uh, his little bro. Um, who else? I don't want to think I'm missing nobody. We have Duff Funny in it. We have uh, Cordario in it. Um, we have uh, making sure and Don Snipes uh, and mm-hmm. Zoe Kelly. So those are the individuals that's like cool. the main characters, and they've just all played their role. To for, the for crew, who did you select for crew? Do you do you kind of have the same team, or do I have you bring in team. new people? I okay. have the same team. Oh, so on dimes, I, dimes the crew was. So I did the D, I did I DP hmm. and uh and partly direct. Hmm. So um my sound was Tino, um and Tino is so funny. We went to high school together, and he's a sound guy now, great sound guy. Uh, Tino um. Uh, lighting, it was a collective effort. So my ex- one of my executive producers, Dion, came and helped. And then we have our unit production manager, which is Rebecca, Rebecca mm-hmm. Shelby. So she gets everybody in order, everything. Then we have dope, a dope crew of uh, PAs that worked on it too. So and, and, and even when it comes to like stuff, uh, it's so funny. One of my homegirls in LA is big on like wardrobe because mm-hmm. wardrobe becomes big. Oh, especially like let in me an not action forget. movie. I'm sorry, I am so sorry, but let me not forget uh-huh. wardrobe here. Marv Neal styled this movie. Okay, cool. Coldest. Like, just the fashion alone of what everybody's wearing in this movie is going to be like, yo. That's, that's cool. Dope. Like, 
mm-hmm. people like a lot of, I mean, some people seeing it even with the trailer, they were like, oh, that's cute what she got on, which means I know it's people effective. are paying attention. You know yeah, what I mean? And it, because my homegirl is so funny. Like she does the action stuff. Like, so she'll, her back seat is always filled with clothes. Cause it's like, okay, this is <laughs> yeah. shirt before the fire, yeah, yeah, yeah. shirt after, in the middle of the fire, <laughs> yeah. shirt after the fire, yeah. shirt after the fire. And he walks through the street for 10 days. Yeah. And it's like, damn, how are you doing this? Definitely. <laughs> definitely, man. And we, and we like my continuity, like, I remember my continuity in my first uh, high school film. It's like the dude was wearing a hat one day, then not wearing a hat. My teacher was yeah, like, man. Man, uh, uh, Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> but they, uh, great job. Great job of actually, you know, pulling it together and making mm-hmm. it work, man. So I'm really excited about this, man. It's a good story. Congratulations. Um, I appreciate it. How will, uh, how will people be able to see it? I'm definitely looking forward to it. So we have uh, we have a uh, uh, red carpet uh, November the 20th. I'm November. I'm sorry. October the 29th. Okay. At uh, Bel Air uh, Luxury Theater. Okay. So um, that's on Eight Mile. Um, you can get your tickets at Eventbrite. Or you can even call me three one three four five zero two zero four two for tickets. Um, and then after that, it'll be dropping on streaming soon after that. So cool, yeah. cool. Yeah. And uh, and then just last question because in the streaming world, and I'm thinking through how how is the streaming money versus the physical copy money? Do you like it? Do you not like it? it is it working? Streaming. Because it's a lot of uh, do more it. content out yeah. there nowadays. No physical copies of anything it makes uh-huh. no sense anymore. So uh, yeah, I don't even know who has DVD players yeah, that's outside. Nobody, of, no, yeah. But so, but do you like the streaming money? Is it fair? How how is it working money, now? Streaming money is amazing for us. Okay, okay, it's amazing for especially Detroit because we we pretty much have an old genre of, of our yeah. Own, that's what I was gonna say. Detroit yeah. movies, like you said. Yeah, yeah. It's a, <laughs> so hey. so I mean, it, it's a good it's a good time to be a Detroit filmmaker. And, and then it's it's weird too. Through some of this stuff, I'm seeing. Things like uh, like on Tubi, mm-hmm. not just Amazon Prime, but no. Amazon Prime. It's many Tubi, different Roku, platforms. Uh, yeah, we're we're on all pro- platforms, man. And that brings me. And as people are cutting the cord, it's more people I know tapping into this yeah. stuff. Which brings me to uh, just keep you keep everybody and let you know about Homestead Entertainment, which is uh, one of the founders of Homestead is Dennis Reed from here. Hmm. So okay. it's his own is his own uh, distribution company. Wow. That a lot of us work with so. I mean, we are pretty much under a label okay. uh, of Homestead, and they're doing a great and amazing job of getting our Stories black narratives to the people and doing it and doing it and promoting it in a way where it's getting to them. Good. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, shout out to the industry, Homestead Entertainment, and, uh, you know, everybody who worked, Dion, Dion Shepard, uh, you know, Rebecca, who's been with mm-hmm. me for a good while, you know what I mean? Um uh, you know, EPs, I appreciate all of them. And, uh, you know, it's a good time. Like I said, it's a good time to be a filmmaker, man. All right. So classic Detroit is different questions coming at you now. Cool. Your very first car, the year making model and the year you got it. Oh, man. Um, uh, 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 Renault. Mm. Um, okay. <laughs> blue. Okay. Uh, 90. I graduated 90. Probably ninety five. Mm. Um, my uh, stepfather backed it into a dump truck, and I hated it and stopped driving it. And then my mother brought me a laser. Hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. I guess your mom was looking out because yeah, getting two when rides. I graduated, was definitely... When I graduated high school, she bought me a Mustang. Ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, man. Ah. She was she was working, bro. She was like, "Oh, let's come on." Where was the Where is the first place you went when you got your first ride? First place, man. Where did I go? I don't know, man. Probably just senior albums and stuff. I don't okay. remember. Yeah, all right. Place, yeah. All I didn't right. do much. I didn't do a whole lot in that car because I drove it. I actually drove it all the way from Florida here, and by the time it got here from Florida, it wasn't the car that it. That was in Florida. <laughs> I, my grandmother gave it to me. Hilarious. You know what I'm saying? It, so it, by the time it got here, you man, put, it probably, it probably yeah. didn't go over 60 miles per hour. Or mm-hmm. when it did go over 60 miles per hour, it probably took a good it has, two minutes. It had some shaking on <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, definitely, you was, definitely. You shaking shake. on the lives. Yeah, like, definitely, oh. definitely. definitely <laughs> way yeah. Yeah. So that was the first All one. All right. So, um, so that's question one. Second one. You are the DJ at the... After the fireworks, Woodward and Jefferson, you get to play three songs. What songs are you playing? Uh, who man, a change gonna come. Okay, Sam Cooke, I'm with that. Uh, Zoom, 
Ah, Commodores. And, okay. Uh, um, Lionel um, Richie Commodores. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And mm-hmm. uh, um, oh, man, I want to say ridiculous. Um, that's the song I played when uh, you know, uh, I married my wife. Mm. So that was a, my walk down song. Okay, ridiculous. I don't even know. Raheem Devon. Ah, yeah. okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, ridiculous. Okay, yeah. so well, that definitely had a sentimental value to your yeah, wife. Yeah, yeah, man. Everybody like, else yeah, would be like, yeah, hmm, yeah, interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, and very last question: um, You could rename Woodward after one Detroit, or who would it be and why? Woodward after one Detroit? Yep. Oh, my mom. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Why? Because that's my mom, bro. <laughs> that's enough of a even, reason. I my can't G. even explain it. Like that's. That's what it is. My That's mom, man, reason. it would be, yeah, Dolores, Dolores Franklin. I would make her, I would make her keep her, I would make her keep her married name, though, because, uh, you know, I still a part of my stepfather, so she'd probably be like, I'm brown, but it's like, no. Hilarious. Dolores Franklin. It would okay. be. <laughs> I'm with it. I'm sure he would like that too. Yeah. <laughs> so that's cool, man. Thank you so much. I look to uh, definitely, like I said, the doors are open. You're going to see definitely. some more collaborations. Oh, I'm going to see you at the premiere, man. Uh, we'll definitely yeah. that. And then also just, you know, more of the people connected to your projects from crew to cast mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Uh, these stories need to be told, and yeah. Detroit stories definitely need to get out. I'm glad you came to sit oh, down man, with Detroit. It's different. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you for having me. All right. Peace be. Detroit is Different is where you get information, artistry, history, music, and even comedy. Detroit is Different, a home for the culture of Detroit. Visit online at DetroitIsDifferent.com today.